Sage Jill with Quick Flix. And I'm hoping that um, it's been a long time. Again, this is the introduction to all of my videos. I have at least two or three sitting in my photo album that I haven't uploaded yet for some reason. I've been having more issues, guys, but I'm trying my best. Um, I'm finishing up an order here for, it's a farm-based, or not farm, what do I want to say? Yeah, farm yard, farm, farm animals in a barn and whatever. Um, here is the barn that I'm using, and this is uh, 10 by, about 10 by 10, the size. Um, I'm doing the front and the back with a long peg, which I'll show you later why it's going to go on a long peg. I don't know if this filming spot is going to work because my husband's in the midst of um, redoing my my um, craft room. Um, the, those of you that have been watching me for quite a while, you probably know that I don't have a whole lot of room left. And... What's happening is all the white cabinets that I had in, they were ones that I had gotten um, at Michael's and, and I can't think of, they're not bolt wood, they're press board and, and they're not made sturdy enough for me. I, I get my boots or my shoes or whatever I have on, which is usually in the winter, it would be boots. I get them, the, them caught on the handles and rip those off. I have so much paper on them, the weight, they can't support the weight of my, my, um, pads of paper and they either break the shelf or they they um make the the square of it expand on the sides and the shelves drop uh a lot of issues with it and, and i've been pretty and eh, whatever but it's getting to a point that i can't i i, I just i don't have enough room i don't have enough workspace so my husband is redoing the whole entire room, which is just huge. It's a big room. Uh, not really, but um, this piece that I'm working on now, this is 36 inches wide, and it is 10 feet long. This is going to be left for my work area at all times. I'm not, I'm not um, going to have things on top of it. When I'm cutting... I will put my machine up, and I've got my little, my cables clip, clipped uh, up here, hanging a little clip that when I'm going to do some cutting, I will just put the machine on, do my cutting. Uh, well, that's what I'm doing right now. It depends on, he's, when he does the other side of the room, it depends on how much space I have. I, I'm going through everything and throwing out the things that I'm not using, and I have just got just way too much stuff. And if anybody's thinking, send it to me, send it to me, it's not stuff worth, it's just, it's not. I, I save everything, and and I have a lot of nothing. So I'm cleaning all that up. i got a little dab of glow on here, and I'm trying to get it off before it dries too much. Um, anyway, and the desk that he's making, he's making it with shelves, and on top of those shelves... You can see in the background here, probably not. I think it's over here. You might be able to see. I'm watching in here to see where I've got crates, wood crates. I've got 24 wood, wood crates that fit in each one of the cubies. And behind me, where the last desk is going, the desk at the end here that holds my printer is four feet long and two feet deep. I've got it fill up, filled with, I've sorted out all of my trims. Um, I've categorized everything and organized it. So everything here, all of the bins that are in front of me here on this on this 10 foot piece uh, are trims, laces and uh, trims, fabric, things, ribbons, things like that. Uh, got a lot of it, but now I have it all in, in one spot in the sense that it's all in these bins. I and shouldn't say all. I have it hanging on my pegboard, but I'm not going to take my pegboard down, so that's going to stay there. There's my first piece. Uh, I'll give you a tour when it's all done. I will do a, a, a... I'm loving it, though, and it's all wood. So, the thing that I like about it being all wood is that the shelves are much sturdier. And he put the shelves in so that they can pull out. 
and my bins are on top of it. So I can either pull the bin out and dig in it, or, oh, I don't know why I put all that wood pieces in there, I didn't need those. Um, I don't want those anymore, I want these. I needed the long pegs, so I don't want to dig in there for. Um, so the crates, if I'm working and I have a whole bunch of whatever that I need, I'll just take the crate out and set it on the floor by me or whatever instead of digging through numerous and throwing a bunch of stuff on top of my desk, which I normally do. And right now it's kind of uh, not in real good order because I have my entire half of my room there in boxes and nothing is set up yet because he hasn't finished that desk. This side is set up, but it's still got more stuff on it than it normally will. Like I said, when it's all done, I will take and give you a tour. I am loving it. Um, I'm not going to leave my glass pieces down. I have a piece of glass sitting here, and I have a piece of glass over under by, by my printer. Um, I will have glass where I can set it when I'm glittering to put under my paper as I glitter and when I'm gluing because I don't want that all over my, I don't want it all over my desk. It's got varnish on it, finish on it, but I don't want it all over my desk. So I've got a piece of glass here underneath these glitters and I will leave it there. Um, and I've got a little piece of glass under this as I glue so the hot glue doesn't drop all over my desk. It hasn't hurt it because I've done it, but eventually I'm I'm afraid it'll start to peel the finish off and I don't want that. Because guys, I'm not doing this again. This has not been fun. On top of everything else I have to do, trying to re reorganize my, my office has been uh, quite the nightmare. Uh, the love these coffee stir sticks for the fine areas like the tip here where the, the, the weather vane is is that um, when I put them in there I can just put my finger down or, or tweezers down or anything and just snap it and it comes snaps right off you love it I've got eight of these to do so I'm keeping my hot glue sticks here for the time being I do have to re think every time I put something away I have to think how I had it and if that worked for me how to make that work for me again because these are built completely different and accessible it, the, the how they're accessible is completely different than how they used to be I don't have drawers anymore um, which the downside to my having all the drawers that I had is I just would throw anything in them and they got where I was combining just any odds and ends that were on top of the table got thrown in whatever door they would fit. And I was just, it was getting to be a bigger and bigger and bigger mess. And, and I didn't have room because the drawers that I was using were only like four inches deep. These bins are 11 inches deep. They're 11 by 17. And I got them at Michael's. Ordered them online by the dozen. So I got two dozen of them. And um, I think they're going to work for me. I think they're going to work perfect. Uh, we'll see <laughs> as time goes on if I start whining and complaining. I'm not going to do that in front of my husband because he's putting a lot of work into making these desks for me exactly how I want them. He doesn't know that I came up with another idea that I want as an addition. But I'm, I won't get that. I came up with that until he's done with this one project at a time. Um, let me see whatever news has happened. It is the end of January already. Time is flying by. And um, things have been um, so so. I'm not going to say good. Starting New Year's Eve, when we, were, we all have our family, our whole family gets together with all the grandkids, and we have a big New Year's party. And this year we didn't have anything because New Year's Eve, my son, who hosts the party, 
um, New Year's call to say his wife, my daughter-in-law, had COVID. And I take care of their one-year-old little girl. She's pregnant, four, five, five months now. Um, she's doing a few months, so she's five or six months. And not finding out what it is, so if anybody asks, we don't know, and we're not going to know. This was going to be a surprise. But anyway, she called to say she had COVID. And so they went into quarantine. I didn't have little um, Ellie during the quarantine time. Quarantine was up, and she was ready to come back. And then my son got it. Um, and not only did my son get it, but my granddaughter got it. So those guys had it. And then the following week, I got a call that my absolutely paranoid daughter who has been just ab absolutely this has been she's been driving me nuts with this covid because she just reads and hears all the gory details and whatever and just terrified and terrified because of my granddaughter who had tumor and um once we were all vaccinated she got better and surprisingly when she got it um, she was fine with it. Um, nobody got very, very sick. The worst was my one-year-old granddaughter. Um, that kind of scared my daughter-in-law, who's a nurse, because, um, she kind of had some respiratory, it, you know, a little bit of problems with, like a cold or whatever, and she got a little nervous about that, but everything was fine. That was only for one night. Otherwise, they were all fine. Then every time the phone rang, it was like, do I really want to answer this? And my daughter got it. And she called to tell me um, my granddaughter had it. And then a week later, I get called, or a few days later, after every time quarantine is up, I get a call from one of them. Then I got a call that my son had it, my other son. And then it was within a day, so I got called that both his kids and wife had it. And then my daughter called me to tell me my other granddaughter that I take care of full time had it. And uh, the other eight-year-old daughter had it. And my oldest two grandkids, 17 and 15, got it. Um, telling me everybody. And I do not know how my husband and I have been flying under the radar. And we've been tested every time they test, we would test. You know, no symptoms or anybody, anything, but we could be asymptomatic. And so far... We haven't had anything, and I went with my daughter this morning and to my granddaughter's basketball game, a granddaughter who hasn't had it yet. Uh, so I went to her basketball game with my daughter, and her son stayed at home, and the baby who were at home with daddy because my two-year-old grandson had a fever, and she said, I don't know, I'm thinking he's got COVID. And I said, well, yeah, I don't know how you guys didn't get it when, when her sister, my other daughter, had it and her whole family. So we got home from the game. I went to her house because I had my car there. I didn't go inside. The, the two-year-old was sleeping, and the baby was sleeping, and, and we weren't real sure what was going on. When we got back from the game, went back to her house to get my car, because I rode to her, the game with her. And I went in because I had not seen my five-month-old granddaughter in a week or two. I don't even know how long it's been. But I went in and she had a little bit of a runny nose. I held her for a little bit. Stayed there for not more than ten minutes at the outside most. My two-year-old grandson who had the fever woke up from his nap. And I kind of stayed away from him. I patted him on the back of the head. But um, no gobbly goo or anything like that like I normally do. He's going to like to pick him up and squeeze the snot out of him. So I get home and I get a text from my daughter that he's got COVID. We were just there and find out he's got it now. Which means I am sure every one of her kids are going to get it that missed it this last time. So, guys, I just had face on with COVID again. I am so sick of it. You have no idea. I've been dealing with that every single... I swear, every time I pick up the phone, somebody else has got it. But 
uh, shouldn't say pick up the phone. Every time, time you hear a ding on the text, they do a group text to everybody in the family. Kind of have everybody on alert that they've got it. Well, my husband and I haven't been trying to, I mean, we're not going to try and get it. But we also haven't been over cautious either because um, so far, if it's this Omnicron or whatever it's called, it's supposed to be very, very, very contagious, but also very mild. None of them have had anything more than a mild cold. None of them have been bad with it. Thank God. But I have a feeling, guys, that I didn't miss it this time. I have a gut feeling it's going to be popping my turn. And I hope it's all okay because um, they've had it very mild. I can serve more my, with my husband than me having it, which I probably shouldn't be so freaking casual about it, but I, I am. I'm just, I don't know, and I'm not going to start bragging and saying that I don't ever get sick because that's when it happens. That the kids have colds all the time, sick all the time, and I never get it, and I take care of them. So... I may not be that lucky this time. And what else is going on? Um, snowed last night, so it, we missed Christmas and had a brown Christmas this year. However, we're going to have a white Easter, I have a feeling. We've been getting a lot of snow lately. Lots of it. And, guys, I'm going to have to sneak a mint here. This is eight centerpieces, and this is why it's taking me a little bit here, gluing them all together. I measured all the sticks ahead of time, but because I'm redoing my office, I don't have my little my little saw out. I don't know in which bin it's at. So I just cut them, and I didn't cut them all exactly the same size, and I want them to stand in the box. These are going to stand inside a six by six box with tissue paper. Um, so they're going, that's why they have a long peg on them because the, the base will be in the bottom of the box. And I'm going to glue again. So, there we go. Uh, I am still absolutely obsessed with my Oculus. Uh, my daughter, use the excuse of getting one for the family for Christmas. And I know darn well it was to get one for her, which I might have mentioned in one of my my um, videos that I haven't posted yet. I'll still try. But um, she's hooked on it now, too. And I absolutely love it, but I implemented even more than the last time when I taped. I had told you about my DP method and my Stairmaster that I've gotten and my rebound trampoline. Well, now I'm, I got my, had my weights all along, but now I've gotten into a whole routine of doing everything from my weights to, I have a routine uh, and do 10 and 15 min minutes of everything. And uh, it is, it's been awesome. It's been awesome, awesome, and I recommend anybody. It just, it's an absolutely fabulous way to start a new year. I have lost, I know I lost all the weight I gained during the, the pandemic. Um, I didn't gain much, but, but uh, that rebounder and that Oculus, I said, I wasn't in this good of shape when I was in high school wasn't a real sporty type of person. Not much into that, but um, loving it, guys. Loving it. I joined a group of, of uh, over 50, 50 plus, and I think they're all pretty much uh, 50 um, or just barely 50 because they're talking about their children and things, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm talking about my grandkids. But there's one lady on there, and she's 85 years old. And I said, doggone it, if that woman can do it, I can do it. But then I was watching some of the stuff. Her daughter is a professional trainer. And um, 
so has her into not the my little weights my little hand weights but into the barbells this woman's unbelievable I don't know. not interested in doing that guys that is not what my goals are but I want I, I call it I the things I've been working out are called uh, tank top arms so I had set a goal for myself it's been seven months now and I set that goal on my 69th birthday that on my 70th birthday I was going to not be at the weight because that wasn't the issue the issue is the, the sitting around doing nothing for two years with that That's the wrong side, guys. I almost made a mistake, but I caught it because of the weather pain. Anyway, uh, I that's probably why I kept keep implementing more and more and more stuff because <laughs> my goal is is coming around soon. So my 70th birthday, we're gonna see if I make it and, and where I want to be which nobody will know what where I want to be. And if I don't make it, you still won't know where I want to be because if I don't make it, I'm not going to post it. But I think, it, I, I think I'm going to do it. I think I, I think I can. I think I can. I haven't, lost, I haven't lost hope yet. It's been absolutely a blast. I love doing it. I look forward to it. And uh, my husband said I became obsessed. And I said, I never realized it was <laughs> this, so, this much fun. But my daughter used to always say, you know, something about if we were going to do something, she always had to make sure she allowed her time for her her exercise and working out. And I always would say, geez, you know, give it a break. Who, who cares? Whatever. And now I get it. And I had to tell her, I said, now I know. Now I know where you're coming from. I plan everything around it. When we got back from Disney that night, I had to make up for being gone for a week. But it doesn't, when we go out or anything, when I go home, you know, my, my old daughter says, oh no, she's just going home because she, you got to work out. And they make fun of it. But it's become, it's really a lot of fun. It really is. And I think what really inspired me and made me have so much fun is the Oculus. And I used the Supernatural. And reading all these other women on the 50 plus um, board that were, we were all on a, in a group together. Uh, I didn't realize how many elderly people there were out there that were crazy. I thought I was the only one that could get so obsessed. And some of these people shamed me. They're so, they're so into it and, and good. You know, I look at their scoreboards and things, and man, there are a lot of feisty ones out there. That is for sure. I have had a lot of people ask what it is, and I can't really describe it other than it being a virtual workout and who would have ever thought a vir virtual workout would work it doesn't mean you do it on the computer but it's awesome so I'm almost done with the last one here um and probably what i'm going to do because i do believe i need to go down and get some bases i forgot to bring some up I told you on the couple of videos that I haven't posted. So this will be only repeated, only a repeat of something that I just said, providing I get any of these posted, is that, um, now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. I forgot. All the exercise is really helping with memory, too. I don't know if you've noticed, but. It was something profound that I didn't really say. I just know it. But it forgot. forgot. There we go. Oh. oh, I know what I was going to say is that my husband makes the bases now. I looked at Hobby Lobby for the little, the little four-inch tall square. They're called planter boxes. And then the, the ones that are about an inch tall, and they're about a six-inch square, maybe five-inch square, and they they're a lot lower those are what i've been using and looking at a lot of um folk shops they i see everybody using them so it doesn't surprise me that they're no longer available they've been on back order for at least six months 
but the pandemic has everything's on back order and because the other uh everything that i was using is on back order except for the lids of the box lids the only problem that i have using the lids from the boxes is you can't buy the lids by themselves you can only buy them with the six by six box well i use a six by six by six box a lot for a base but the lid is connected. It's all in one, which I like better because it's better for shipping and less chance of it damaging and breaking the box lid because you have to fold it and put it together. Um, but those, I, all I use is the lid. I don't use that many of the boxes. And so in order for me to get them, I would have to order all the boxes too. And so I said, I can't be doing that. And I asked my husband because he has a router and everything. Um, so how hard would it be for you to make the base and round them out so not just cut out of lumber? So he did them and he said, not hard at all. And he uses his router to finish them off just, and they look just exactly like the ones that you can buy at any hobby shop. Um, he makes them squares and rectangles and um, then he just stains them whatever color I ask. So I'm back to using those kind of bases again. So now he makes them, we don't buy them any longer. I probably won't buy them anymore. Inflation is up to 8% already. And I can tell by going to, well, online, I don't go to a shop, but on Amazon and things, uh, the prices are just absolutely going through the roof. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as my shop and pricing and things because uh, if all the materials, materials are getting more expensive, uh, I can just about imagine. Um, what effect that's going to have on my business. Shipping, everything, unbelievable. You can't get anything. The grocery stores, never in my life have I seen empty shelves. And they said they just don't have enough people. You know, every time somebody gets corona, they've got to go on a 10-month or 10-day quarantine and then somebody else gets it and there's 10 days there and it's just this has got to be over pretty soon it's going to make me nuts a lot of everybody else but guys i'm going to come back to this because i got to go get the bases that i'm going to be using and i will pick up and finish so you can see what these look like completed so i will be back and thank you for watching